Hey, Megan, so happy to have you on today. So talk to us about who you are and what you do. Hi, Joshua. Thanks for having me. I am a UX writer and I'm fairly new to UX writing, but I've been a writer for a really long time. So I was, I've been a writer for about 20 years, mostly in technical writing. And I've worked for various companies, Apple, Symantec. I worked for a small startup security company called FireEye. And then I worked for Yahoo for quite a long time. And more recently, I transitioned to a, into a full-time UX writing role. Very cool. And walk us through that journey of one is getting into technical writing and then two, ultimately getting into UX writing and that self-identification process, internal alignment, mm -hmm. external alignment that happened throughout that journey and maybe some critical steps you took to make sure that you found a career that you really enjoyed. Absolutely. Yes. So let's see. I, um, my very, very first job was at Apple in the 1980s and I was working on a tech support hotline and it turned out they were, they had decided to go from contract writers to an in-house group and they were just building a really big group. And I had kind of just had a sense that I always liked writing and I, I wanted to try my hand at being a writer. So I, I landed a job as a junior writer at a time when they were really just trying to hire a lot of people. And so it was just sort of a lucky opportunity for me. I was already inside the company. And then I just got to know the people who were running that group and eventually applied and, and got the job. And through that, at that position, it was early on in my career. And I, let's see, I, I got, had some very good mentorship. So I highly recommend mentorship, you know, finding a mentor, someone who can help you learn the ropes. And let's see, um, from there, well, I did, I took, I personally took a, a long break from in my career um, when I had kids in the mid nineties into the two um, thousands. So I took a long time off and then I sort of had the challenge of breaking into go, just going back to work after having been out for a while. And everything had changed between 1995 and 2005. So things were done so much differently. It was much more online help and less, it, it, it was less, um, the, the company where I started working after I returned to work, the focus was a lot less on very precise writing and just, it was sort of like, get the, get the instructions out there, that kind of thing. Um, and then, then I switched to a different group in that same company and started to learn about DITA and structured authoring. So that was really a very interesting experience for me because I think it's pretty valuable as a tech writer to learn structured authoring. And let's see, um, gosh, I, I think really like uh, to be successful as a writer, it's good to just sort of have a can-do attitude and just whatever tools are being used, just try to learn the tools and, and try to learn the, the, the way the group works and just really um, kind of lean into trying new things because the, everything's always changing and evolving. At least that's what I've noticed through my career. Um, let's see. I think even just the idea of UX writing itself is a fairly new and emerging field. So as a tech writer, I think I created a lot larger volume of content versus as a UX writer, I have learned to like, the content, the amount of content you create is a lot smaller, but it's very critical. So whatever's on the page, how the page is titled, how the page fits into the overall workflow, you know, what the user's going through. Um, so it's not a lot of writing, but it's much more focused. And a lot of times just to write one heading, page heading, it might take, you know, three or four discussions with different people and different groups of people to get a lot of different perspectives because what the user sees on that page is so critical to their success that um, you know that particular page title or, or an error message, let's say. Um, so it's a lot more focused 
work that requires a lot of concentration, a lot more meetings, collaboration, um, not, not as much volume though. And I'd love to hear how you got your first job in UX writing. So how that transition was made, mm. talked a little bit about mentorship and how that's important. Um, so what were some of the variables that one like helped you decide that like, Hey, I should transfer into UX writing. And mm -hmm. I think two is also going like, Hey, if I'm going to do this, what are the things that I need to have maybe my portfolio or I need to exemplify as a person? Mm. So if they consider me a great candidate. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I, um, I've seen out there, I've joined a few on social media groups where people have these UX writing challenges. So I highly recommend that because what you can do is there'll be a certain challenge, like design an app that does, you know, let's say tracks flights and informs people that their flight is going to be delayed or something. That was, you know, just one small example, but little things like that, where, the, where you get some practice, like how would you use, or how would you frame this so that people understand it? For me, I, it happened sort of organically that I got into UX writing because I was working under a support organization at Yahoo and they sort of didn't really know where to put writers. <laughs> it's like, wh which groups do we put them under? And, oh, let's just kind of bundle them under support or whatever. And so um, we often had reorgs and <clears throat> we'd end up in different places. And then, then as the uh, a design group started to emerge, they thought, okay, we want all the writers under design. And so it wasn't even really my decision, but I started doing as part of my job, I was responsible for a big help center, but I also, was responsible for some of the page content. And I was almost as a sort of consulting role. So the designers would come to me and we'd sort of jam on some different projects. And, and so I started doing more and more of that and, and looking for opportunities to do that. Uh, it was really my favorite part of the job. And so then, yeah, I think between that and having studied user research and, and user experience design in school, it helped me to kind of round out um, my next position, which um, I had never had the title of UX writing a writer, although I had been doing UX writing. So I think maybe looking for opportunities to do UX writing where possible, like, hey, I'm, I'm a, a, a tech writer or I'm an, a product manager, or I'm whatever role you are currently, just sort of look for opportunities. Oh, I'd love to work with designers and see if I can help out with some of the page content. And then as you start to do that, you start to get some samples of your work and you could maybe put together a blog and explain like, oh, here's what we started with and here's how it evolved and what we ended up with and that kind of thing. So I think that um, can really help people just, you know, kind of look for opportunities. I don't, I always have been one to believe that whatever your job title is, is sort of irrelevant and what you are actually doing in the job is, is important in terms of what you can say that you know how to do on your resume. Yeah, and you mentioned a couple of key things here that I'd like to reiterate, which is one is like putting your attention into actually doing exercises, which help create tangibility. And I think the work that you understand that you can produce um, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, wow, I can do this. And mm -hmm. I think one of the other cool things that you mentioned, which uh, you don't hear too often, which I think is so important for someone entering into this role, because sometimes they enter in with no design knowledge per se, but they know how to use Figma and collaborate with designers, mm -hmm. but doesn't mm -hmm. mean they have good idea of like the principles of design, right? And having mm -hmm. a background and just, I think good foundation design principles and understanding why things are the way that they are is super helpful because if you're collaborating, like you're saying, um, the idea is you can help wherever, you're not defined by your job title. The idea is to help the company. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be talking with designers and you know a little bit more about design than they do about a particular area, then, you know, it's your job to speak up. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I feel that way as well. There may be other things I can help with that are, don't involve writing. Like, have you thought about, you know, the changing the flow to, you know, this way or that way? I feel like everyone who's at the table has... It, through their experience and their lens can contribute and can add value to the conversation about when you're setting up a user flow. Very true. And I think part of that, and I, I think it's a hard skill, maybe like soft skills, having confidence in yourself, you know, to just speak up and 
oftentimes it takes a while for people to learn that over time and just be like, Hey, you do know this, say something. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Having that confidence and that sort of, yeah, just, but I also feel like the environment helps a lot where I work. It's super collaborative and everybody's very, very respectful and um, supportive, you know, as a company culture. So yeah, that definitely helps a lot. Yeah. It makes a big difference for sure. And, you know, talk to me about some of the skills that and we went over some of the soft skills, but we can <clears throat> always dive deeper into those and maybe some of the soft and hard skills that you use on a weekly or even daily basis that enable you to do your job well. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, one of the things that has really helped me a lot is I, I joined Toastmasters some years ago and I went through all of their programs. I spent about 10 years in Toastmasters and do, being in Toastmasters helps you be organized and helps you listen. It gives listening skills and it just, it's very inexpensive, but it, it's like a super, it just efficient way to learn a lot of skills. So for example, facilitating discussions or giving speeches, that kind of thing, even what we're doing here today, you know, doing a question and answer, I, I think having that skill, the confidence has really helped me a lot. Um, so Toastmasters. Um, also, I think, let's see, what else has really helped me? Um, I, I think, yeah, just I, being a writer has helped as well, because it helps me sort of flesh out ideas. And you always have to sort of present the information in a way that is going to make sense to people. And so that has, I think, helped me a lot as well. Um, so I guess my writing background and uh, my my presentation skills. Um, the other thing I would say is organizational skills, because some days a lot, there's so much coming at me from different angles and having to manage a large amounts of like large numbers of asks and prioritize which ones are the most important and the most business critical to work on. It has required some sort of project management skills. And so I may find myself for like an entire day, not doing any writing at all, but just doing project, <clears throat> excuse me, project management. <clears throat> and I think that's so yeah. important, especially, you know, the more projects that you work on, the last thing you want to be doing is spending like 30 minutes trying to find a file because you're not organized enough, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, How did I get here? Like, yeah. I should have organized this as soon as this file came to me. What was I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, spreadsheets are definitely my friend. Um, I would say to, yeah, just being organized. Like I have a spreadsheet and I actually learned about this from one of this, these online groups, UX writing groups, where how do you keep track of all the strings you've created so that you're consistent throughout the UI? Um, and so I made a big giant spreadsheet and the tabs are all sort of types of information, it's like error messages or calls to action or page titles or page descriptions, for example. And having that spreadsheet, when someone comes to me and says, hey, we have an error message or we have a page description to write, then I, I can see what language have we used and, and what conventions in the past so that the user will have a more consistent experience. And so, yeah, that's sort of an organizational skill as well, just kind of tracking all your work. and. Yeah, it enables for much more effective communication, like helps the other party out too. Like you're saying, it's like ultimately if, they, ultimately if they're asking you for something and you can respond within like a minute because you're better organized, that's yeah. going to develop a much better relationship for sure. Definitely. And it's a time saver as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's dive in some of the tools that you use that enable you to be successful at your job and some of the tools that you've just loved working with because you've been working as a technical writer for a good amount mm -hmm. of time and a UX writer. And now I'm um, sure you've gotten used to a lot of different tools and there's some for certain things that you really love and for other things that you really love. So what do those look sure. like? I really like Google Docs where you can have a, a document and you allow people to collaborate on the document. It's, it's really nice. It's just sort of a living document. And um, we do this, we use, we don't use Google Docs where I'm currently working, but we use Microsoft. I guess it's like a collaboration. You can you can just share out so shareable documents, I guess, in Microsoft. So I like that. Anything that's sort of sharing and collaboration oriented. Uh, we use Jira. Jira is great for 
creating projects and keeping track of your workload. So I've always had a JIRA Kanban, I'd say for the last eight or 10 years or so. Uh, having a Kanban board is sort of like, then I can rank and prioritize my tasks and what I need to be working on. And let's see, so I, I think I mentioned Excel. I like spreadsheets, you know, spreadsheets are super helpful for keeping track of the strings or, or even doing an audit. You can audit what it, what content is there in your platform or your product. And once you have an audit, you kind of get a really good big picture view of sort of what's maybe working or what's inconsistent, that kind of thing. And um, Confluence, we've been using Confluence for creating a style guide. So you mentioned, I think maybe even before you started recording, but you mentioned the overlap between technical writers and UX writer. I'm the only UX writer so far, but hopefully not the first, but hopefully not the last. But my two colleagues, one is an API writer and one is a UI writer. Uh, so we, I think that the functions of UX writing and tech writing are pretty, there's a lot of overlap in my opinion, but as a group, we create a style guide. So we are all using a consistent style throughout the UI, throughout the knowledge portals, et cetera. So I do like Confluence for that reason, just kind of storing information. And then of course, Figma. Figma is really nice. I use it all the time with designers. Some designers want me to go into the Figma and create the page content from Figma. So I like that because you can see if your string is going to fit on the page well, or you kind of have to leave a little extra room too for other languages, because sometimes they expand out. But yeah, I, I really like using Figma. Um, that's about all I can think of. I We do use Slack, which is, I sort of have a little bit of a love hate with, because it's, <laughs> um, I think everyone uses Slack these days, but um, we're a very Slack-based culture at the trade desk. But yeah, as long as you set up your notifications correctly, so you're not getting mm -hmm. the whole time. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, and then when we think about like tools, a lot of the tools have shaped sort of the future of writing to a large extent, um, such as a tool like Figma that was originally meant for designers and also you have UX writers working with designers in Figma. And then we mm -hmm. also have UX writing, um, in some cases, moving to terminology of like content design in some areas where people are just either getting new jobs or not even getting a new job, just changing their title to content designer from UX writer. And mm. Just getting yeah. an idea of where the industry is going. Where do you think um, different parts of UX writing is going in terms of the future? Mm. Yeah, you know, I think what is, well, at least from my perspective, I, I've only had this one UX writing job and for a fairly short time, but um, from my sort of limited perspective, um, I think that it may be evolving into a little bit of a programmer type role because the, all of the UI strings at my company are stored in code in, you know, in GitLab. And so um, I did use GitLab in my previous position at Yahoo and, or I use GitHub, which is similar, but I think, yeah, it might be evolving more to a, sort of a, you're almost like a developer, the information developer. So you'll go in and you'll actually update the code to change the strings. And that's a much more efficient way of working because currently we rely on our engineers to add the strings. So we decide on all the strings, work with the designers, or in some cases we work on the platform when it's not a new design, then improving things in the platform. And then <clears throat> we require our coders to go in and cha make just changes to the strings. But that's really not as technical a task as, um, as actual coding. So, but I do think that we'll be touching on coding a little bit more in the future. Yeah, I'm definitely in the same boat as you. And I think this is probably one of the reasons that I've heard titles like product writer or even like technical product writer start to like pop mm. up here and there. And I'm just like, hmm, I feel like this is, this is a sign of, of what's soon to come. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think as long as you know that you can prepare to some degree, which is always great. It's like, okay, well, if this is where the industry is going, like, how do I get ready? And, you know, what do I need to learn to, to make sure mm -hmm. that I'm up to date? 
which takes us back to the beginning. It's like, got to find the right exercises, make your work tangible and go through the full cycle again. Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of need for open source or open source collaborators. So I think being, yeah, an open source UX writer, I'm sure people could find all kinds of need for that out there and get some experience. It's sort of volunteering your time, but helping something, usually a pretty worthy cause, you know, with people developing and some pretty cool things out there. Yeah, very true. There's everybody needs help and it's a great way to build relationships. And, you know, when we look at um, trying, so a lot of people watching this video, they're coming from either technical writing background. Some of them are English teachers, copywriters, and they're thinking mm. of taking their first step into a UX writing role and seeing whether mm -hmm. it aligns with them. And, you know, there's other different types of roles that they can get into that are still in writing. What are some of the signs that a UX writing role may be a fit for them though? And that they should at least test the waters. Oh, that's a great question. For me, I think <clears throat> if they like collaboration, you know, if they like working with on a on a design team with other people and coming up with designs, that may be, you know, if that just really gets them going, gets their juices flowing, um, I think they may really enjoy it. Because I will say it's really the most fun job I've ever had. So um yeah, working with people and and also if they find it, if it comes easy easily to them to think through uh, some sort of design and task and how should the page be page layout, um, how should the information be laid out, if that comes easy and they enjoy it, then I think that would be a good sign. And I, I, yeah, so I would try some of those exercises that these UX writing challenges and see, oh gosh, is this, um, do I like this or is it, or, you know, gosh, oh, I hate this. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> so maybe this isn't for me, you know, but just try it out. Cause I think that would be a really easy way rather than committing to a job. And then you're all of a sudden you're in a job and go, oh, you know, I'm not sure this is for me. Um, <clears throat> maybe, you know, dip your toe in the water a little bit and try out some of those exercises and, um, you know, I think it's um, also it how well you um, take feedback because I, I've learned over time. I think when I, early on in my career, I was sort of like, oh, how dare you <laughs> make comments about my work? But then now I'm sort of like, I so welcome comments because I know that two or three or five heads are so much better than one in terms of coming up with the best way to present things. So I would always defer to like the group what do they call it? The wisdom of crowds kind of mentality. So, um, so yeah, I mean, so I think you sometimes maybe need a little bit of thick skin or the ability to um, absorb feedback and be okay with feedback. Cause I think sometimes other people's ideas are really awesome and together, you know, we come up with a really, you know, excellent product. And I think that's a big reason why, you know, people who are watching this video are thinking of going into UX writing that they should be people who are very open to collaboration. I think a yeah. lot of people who are very outside of the writing tech field sometimes feel like, hey, I want to get a job that's more introverted and this is not it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it. no, yeah. I think being a tech writer would be perfect for an introvert because, uh, yeah, you don't have to necessarily meet with people that often. You can, you know, do a lot of reading and research and then write things up and then have people, you know, just sort of uh, asynchronously, um, you know, give you feedback on your work or whatever. So, or review your review, your content. So. And there was one thing that we talked about right before we jumped into this interview, which was you know, different things that people could learn outside of UX writing that could help them mm -hmm. become a better UX writer. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. What are your thoughts there? Things they can learn outside of UX writing. Yeah, I think some organizational skills, as I kind of touched on, being able to keep track of things, you know, that you've done, the work that you've done, because it's interesting with technical writing, there's always a sort of whatever authoring tool you're using has a basically has like a record of everything you've done. But with UX writing, there isn't necessarily, it's sort of like you're just working and working and there's you really, it's hard to show, you know, your work like, oh, you know, I've revamped uh, all these pages, but which pages, you know? And so, um, yeah, I think keeping track of your work, 
finding a way to do that. Um, what else? And yeah, I think some of the people skills, being able to, you know, be comfortable meeting with people and, you know, asking a lot of questions, listening skills, being able to listen for um, when you're when you're in a group and and also like being able to um, concentrate in meetings. So um, like being able to just like focus really intensely on what's being discussed and um, how, the, how to solve the problem. Um, and let's see, yeah, any kind of user experience, even just sort of rapid testing where you have a design and you like go and ask people, hey, what do you think of this? And because there's gonna be, I guarantee it, every time you have something that you've designed or worked on, there's gonna be like things you didn't think about. Yeah, so, very true. Um, yeah. And I know we covered a lot here today, and but before we go, is there anything else that you want to leave uh, the people watching this video with before we rock and roll? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just want to say for me personally, I highly recommend this uh, UX writing because it's just really fun. And I do something different every day. So I think, yeah, I think um, making the transition if for those out there who are in technical writing and want to go into UX writing, I, I would say that it's just a lot more fun. And, and I think you can really, um, you'll really enjoy it if, if that's the path you decide, decide on. And Megan, I want to thank you so much for being here today. And if you're interested in connecting with Megan, make sure to go to the description below this video where her LinkedIn profile URL will be. So if you want to connect with her on LinkedIn, you can go ahead and just do just that. Uh, make sure to put a note that you saw her from this video. Um, so oh, awesome. Contact. Yeah. And, thank you so much, Joshua. I really appreciate the opportunity. It was and, really nice meeting you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we'll rock and roll from here and I wish everybody the best. Cheers. Okay. Bye.